welcome back and happy Tuesday. We are coming to you this week with another great topic. We're going to be discussing the changing role of the CEO. I know we have a lot of executives on this on this Tech Tuesday, and so it will be really interesting to see how this landscape is shifting and what that looks like moving forward. This week's guest is Luann Abrams, who is founder of CEOX. Luann and I connected over LinkedIn and I was super inspired by her background. I love the work that she was doing. So I reached out and said, hey, let's get you on here and let's talk. Let's talk CEO. Let's talk CEOX. So Luann, thank you so much for being here. And uh, please tell us who is CEOX. Thanks, Scarlett. So CEOX con connects women to CEO roles. And we're really more than just a talent agency, but we are really creating a movement. We are finding and identifying women who are CEO ready by asking current CEOs and senior leaders who in their network is ready to be a CEO. And then we bring all these women together to connect um, with one another to help um, elevate their careers. We put together programming uh, to help their careers and we have created an ambassador program for more individuals to get involved and uh, really expand the network and find and identify really amazing CEO ready women who can transform companies. women in leadership and, and the CEO type role. So I'm, I'm curious, um, I know one of the things that we discussed a bit beforehand was as, as part of your research and as part of your coming to this idea of CEO X, you saw a lot of the fact that men were being chosen as these replacement CEOs, because of course the tech world is booming now more than ever. Um, there's a lot of capital going into the space and naturally over time and as companies evolve, maybe the CEO who started it and founder is not the right one to take that company to, to growth and scale. Um, why do you think that men are typically the ones that are chosen for these CE, CEO roles and what, what does this stem from? Where does this come from? Well, so the idea of CEOX came from my experience in venture capital, and I kept seeing the founding CEOs being replaced. You know, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. And because that founding CEO doesn't necessarily have the same skill set needed to grow and scale a company, which of course is necessary for a venture capitalist to make money. And over and over again, I kept seeing that it was men chosen to take those roles. So that's when I really dug in and I found a couple things. One, as we know, most venture capitalists are men. Uh, they were not always enlisting the help of a recruiter who might be able to find them a diverse set of candidates to choose from uh, because they didn't necessarily want this, this company to spend critical cash on, on a recruiter, which can be very expensive. And so they would go within their networks. And as they were mostly men, their networks were not gender balanced. And so going through, you know, scrolling through LinkedIn, they're going to see mostly men to choose from. And in addition, I really started digging into the bias issues around hiring. And one thing that popped up over and over again is that men are hired on potential and women are hired on what they've accomplished. And this isn't something most people are, are aware of in their own bodies because we all have them. But if you're looking at two people's profiles, uh, they're very similar. You might see a man's and say, oh, he has the potential to be a CEO. But when you look at the woman's, you think, well, she hasn't been a CEO yet. So we don't really want to give her that, that chance. And, and it's a shame because women-led companies are shown to grow faster, generate more revenue, hire more employees, and have happier employees. So there's a lot of benefits to venture capitalists if they, they really are interested in scaling their companies faster um, and, and making more money, getting to that exit point faster, to have more women leading these companies. 
No, I, it's, it's, it's absolutely right. And the idea of potential uh, really resonates with me. And it's, it's interesting because I think when you take it to the CEO level, you're definitely on a different scale. But those same principles, I think, can be applied even much um, earlier on in that career progression where um, I even think back to my career and when I first got into banking, how uh, I joined a global bank and they hired me with zero banking experience. Um, now, they did that intentionally because I wanted kind of diversity of thought and I had the tech entrepreneur background. But, um, you know, I've done this test in different ways, too, where in different times in my career, because you're so right about the network component and uh, everything has really come, uh, all the opportunities that I've had have really come from the network. And I have not matched, not even, definitely not 100%. 75 at best any of the the requirements for jobs that I've that I've gotten um, because it ended up being based on potential because I had those relationships because I had those networks but I have done tests where during one of these times when I'd be you know potentially looking for a next role where I'd go and apply blindly for a role and the results were not good they just were not good because I didn't have that in and to your point you go and you look does this person check x y or z box um, and so that's certainly true. And the more senior you get, the more important it is. Like the, the network is so much more important when you're talking about CEO level because you're, you're taking on a very, very big role here. And so um, can you talk a little bit more about, because there has been a ton of research, but about why it makes sense to put women in those positions and really the the financial benefit that companies have from having women in leadership, because it's a little bit frustrating for me because I feel like these statistics are so widely available yet. It's still not moving the needle. So I'm trying to understand like we're in. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one. Um, I think more and more data comes out. I, monthly on on the impact for women that women have in leadership roles and I just think that we have a lot of work to do uh, one to change minds I I want to always make it clear that having more women in leadership positions in CEO positions is going to benefit society as a whole and not just women. This isn't just about women, but it's about the leadership skills that women bring that are beneficial to men and women. And in changing the cultures and value systems around companies, women um, are shown to have these incredible leadership skills and that transform the companies in a very positive way. Um, you know, one is just having flexibility in a work day, which truly is a wonderful thing for men to have as well. It's just culturally, we've developed to where it's, it's uh, considered to be a better thing to, to go to work and just work nonstop all day. Whereas if you can have some breaks in the day, check in with your family, uh, maybe get some exercise, all of those are beneficial to your mental health, which makes you a better employee. So there's a huge transformation that women, I think, can bring to businesses and all of them ultimately make the business more successful and make that bottom line of making more money. Um, that's, that's what's going to happen. Awesome. Well, Luann, thank you so much that we could be talking about this topic <laughs> for hours. There are so yes. much here, um, but this, this will wrap it up for today. Thank you for the time for all of you. Thank you as always for tuning in. You can see more about Luann's background, much more about CEO X and the, the great mission and what Luann and team are working on below. As always, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then. Thank you.